In this lesson, we're going to look at Le Chatelier's principle, and that's going to allow us to predict how changes in amounts, temperature, or pressure will affect what's present at equilibrium. So Le Chatelier's principle tells us that when a reaction at chemical equilibrium is disturbed, the system will respond to minimize the disturbance. And we're going to look at three different things that, that can disturb the system, the amount of substance, the temperature, and the volume, which results in a change in pressure. And so what would happen is we have a reaction that we add some either some reactants in or products, some mixture of substances. The system reaches equilibrium. Therefore, it has forward and reverse reaction rates are equal. The amount of each substance is constant. And then we do something that disturbs that equilibrium. So let's think about this outside of the context of a chemical reaction. Let's think about this in terms of an elevator. So I want you to imagine that you're standing on an elevator all by yourself. And then suddenly, someone walks on. How do you respond? most people are going to move because usually we move so that we're kind of spreading ourselves out in the elevator. If a third person gets on, we rearrange until we're all evenly distributed around the elevator. So that elevator with you on it was a system at equilibrium. There was some change and you had to respond to that change. So the more people get on, the more you have to adjust to that change. And this is the same thing we're looking at when we look at systems at chemical equilibrium. The system is happy and stable where it's at, like you were on the elevator by yourself, until somebody else comes on, until more substance is added, or the temperature is changed, or the volume is changed. Any of those substances disturb the chemical equilibrium, and the system has to respond to it. And Le Chatelier's principle allows us to predict what that response will be. So let's look at a change in the amount of substance and whether it will drive the reaction to the left or the right. And so when we say we're driving the reaction, we also talk about shifting the reaction to the left or the right. Remember, when we looked at the K value, that equilibrium constant, it was under those conditions, that particular reaction, and we said, well, there's more products or more reactants. When we have this disturbance to the system, what we see is that the reaction is going to respond and that's going to result in some change in either the amounts of products or reactants, the amount of energy given off or consumed, something is going to change. And so we have to describe what's going to happen. So let's first look at what happens if we add a reactant to the system. So what we have is our balanced equation. We also show that the heat is here, indicating that, that energy is a reactant. This is an endothermic process. We have to put energy in to make this process happen. But we see heat as a reactant. So we're going to say we're going to add a reactant. So if we add additional SO3, what's going to happen is the system says, okay, I have too much SO3, I need to get rid of some of that SO3, so the reaction is going to shift to the right, and it's going to form some more SO2 and some more oxygen, because that's how it's going to use up some of the excess SO3 that I added. So if I add a reactant, I'm going to shift the reaction to the right. That will use up the excess SO3 I added, but it will also form more SO2 and O2. And so that's what we say when we shift it to the right. We're forming more of those products. Now, let's look at what happens when we add product. Now, it doesn't actually matter which product we have, we can add, we can add SO2 or O2 or both, but if we add one of these two products, the system again is going to go, wait a minute, you've disturbed my equilibrium, now I need to respond to that disturbance, and as a result it says, okay, if I've added extra SO2, it wants to use up some of that SO2, and so as a result the reaction is going to shift to the left. So we consume SO2. It will also consume O2 because in order for us to use up the excess SO2, it has to also use O2 in order to form the SO3. So we will lose SO2 and O2 and form more SO3. Now we look at removing a reactant. So when I look at SO3, 
I say, okay, I'm taking away SO3. As a result, the system says, okay, you've disturbed my equilibrium. There's now not enough SO3 for me to be at equilibrium. It's not in that happy place with the relative amounts of reactants and products. And as a result, the reaction is going to shift to the left in order to make up for some of that SO3 that was removed from the system. Similar thing happens if we remove a product. Again, it doesn't matter which product we look at removing, but if we remove a product, we've disturbed the equilibrium, the reaction is going to proceed to the right in order to compensate for that disturbance to the equilibrium, because if we remove SO2, the reaction is going to proceed in order to reform some of that missing SO2 that was removed. So as a result, the amount of SO3 will decrease, the amount of SO2 will increase to close to what it originally was, and the amount of O2 will also increase even though we didn't remove it, because any time an SO3 molecule decomposes, it must react to form SO2 and O2. Temperature changes will also affect whether a reaction moves to the left or to the right or shifts left or shifts right. And so what we look at here is where that energy is in the equation. So here I notice that heat is on the left side. And I'm going to look at two scenarios with this, whether I increase the temperature or decrease the temperature. If I'm increasing the temperature, that is the same as adding heat. And if I add heat to this reaction, because heat is a reactant, that's the same as adding a reactant. And we saw that if we add a reactant, we're going to shift the equation or shift the reaction to the right, because it's going to try to consume some of the excess heat that was added. If I decrease the temperature, that's the same as removing heat. And so if I remove a reactant, what I'm going to see is that that reaction is going to shift to the left because it's trying to compensate for the heat that was removed. So what happens to the system below when the temperature is increased? Now notice here that our heat is now listed as a product, the example we just looked at, the heat was listed as a reactant. You need to think about whether or not that's going to change the behavior as we increase the temperature. So if we look at increasing the temperature, that is the same as adding heat. And in this reaction, because the heat is listed as a product, this is an exothermic process, if we add heat, that's the same as adding a product. And so as a result, the reaction is going to shift left because it's trying to compensate for that added heat. The last disturbance that we will look at for our system here is whether we increase or decrease the volume. And so what we see is when we increase the volume, we actually decrease the pressure and what we see is going to happen when we decrease the pressure it's going to favor more moles of gases and the key there is it's only looking at the moles of gas. Now for this reaction, everything is in the gas phase, so we're looking at where we have more moles because we're trying to compensate. Increasing the volume, decrease the pressure. If I want to increase the pressure, I need to have more molecules of gas. And so I can look at the coefficients to help me. Notice that on the left side, I have two moles of gas. On the right side, I have three. So if I increase the volume, I decrease the pressure, I'm going to favor more moles of gas. And so this is going to shift to the right. Now, if I look at decreasing the volume, that's actually going to increase the pressure and it's going to want to favor fewer moles of gases. Again, just dealing with the gases and so if I've increased the pressure I'm going to favor fewer moles of gas and so it's going to shift to the left. So that it's going to reduce the moles of gas because we're going from three moles of gas on the right to only two moles of gas on the left. 
because the pressure is relative to the number of moles. We only look at the moles of gas. If we have a reaction that had gases and liquids or aqueous solids, we would only look at those substances in the gas phase to determine the moles of the gas on the left and on the right.